Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. For my simple Sunday project this week, I'm going to use the Under My Umbrella Bundle. And this is in the mini catalogue at the moment and I must admit I've only actually just bought it. I wasn't sure that I wanted to make cards with umbrellas and flowers and I didn't know if it was my style. Um, but when I placed my last order, I decided that yeah, I would go for it because I love using punches and this is a bundle that comes with a punch and punches make it so fast when you're crafting. I love my dies and I love my big shot, don't get me wrong, but punches are just so easy. So I'm going to make a card. I don't quite know how it's going to turn out because I haven't made it already, but I am using one of the templates that I use a lot. So that makes it a lot easier. So let me show you what I'm going to use. I always have pieces of card that are pre-cut, ready to make cards with. So my bases are already done. And that way I can choose a DSP and just pick out a colour that I want. And the first pack of DSP that was on my shelf was this Bird Ballad designer series paper. I'm going to use because I want to use scraps and things, I'm going to use this piece because I thought it was sort of rainbow-like. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use either the yellow or the pink. I don't know quite which yet. But because I've already picked my paper, then I just looked through my stash and got a piece of pool party card because that's the colour that's in here. And that's one of the easy things to do with stamping up. All the paper and the card and the inks, they all match and are exactly the same colours. You don't have to think, oh, is that quite right? Or, no, oh, no, it's a bit dark. Because you know they're just they're all gonna match. So let's make the front of the card. I'm gonna put the base on one side because I don't need it at the moment. And I'm going to work on a piece of our Thin Whisper White. And I have already put some of the stamps on my blocks because I think I know what I'm going to use. Might change my mind later. But I'm gonna start with just a sentiment in this bottom right hand corner. And there are some lovely ones on here. I'm, I'm going to use this rain or shine one, but I did think I might use one of the ones from the B set. Um, I was going to use this one, this thinking of you. But in the end, I'm gonna use the, the whole stamp set from under my umbrella. And so just with Memento, I'm going to ink this up. And because these hadn't used, been used before, a little tip that I was shown when I first used Stampin' Up! products was just to rub your thumb over, just to make sure that there's none of the manufacturing oils or anything left on there, like, uh, you know, like a little thread or a piece of lint or something, so that it just sort of primes that stamp for you. I'm just gonna let's put this here and I'm just gonna stamp in this bottom right hand corner and hope it comes out straight Have a look. yep that's fine okay and then I want to put a piece of DSP down this side so you know already which kind of template of mine I'm using uh, I'm going to have a strip of paper here and my focal point's going to be here. So I'm just going to trim that on my trimmer. And I know that my card here is five and a quarter inches long, so I'm just going to cut this roughly the same. And I'd rather have it just a, a tiny bit long and trim off with my scissors. Because sometimes I have found that if I've not cut the card quite straight, you know, I end up with a little piece of card showing underneath. So now I always tend to just use a minimal millimetre or two too long. And uh, then I know I'm safe. Now, why I stamped here first was I wanted to make sure that I had room for my paper. Because, again, I've been caught out sometimes. I put my paper on and then tried to stamp and haven't left quite enough room. So I'm just making sure that's on there nice and straight and then I just trim that extra little piece off. 
always easier just to trim a piece off than try and add a little piece in. Oh, okay. And then I've got two of my other... I oh, can't pick that up, sorry. I've got two of my other punches and I've got a two and a quarter piece um, and a two and a half one. And I'm going to make both circles. And what I think I want to do is to have sort of a backing for my card and then to cut out on white and have my picture on the whisper white. So let's see what colour. Well, actually, let's do the circle first because then I know what I've got to work with. So just with the two and a quarter piece, I'm just going to cut that out, put that over there, and I'm going to stamp the little welly boots. So I'm just going to get my black again. And I want to stamp them sort of just towards the bottom. Oh, now I've got ink on my finger. And now I've got ink. Um, I don't think it'll matter though. Okay, and then I'm going to use the little raindrops as well. And I've got smoky slate out because it's one of the paler greys. Um, let me find a little piece of paper. Just to put this on. Okay, I'm going to just get my raindrops. Make sure they're going the right way. And I'm not doing a pattern or anything. I'm just sort of covering the top. And a little bit at the side. You don't need too much. That's all I need for that. And then with my blends, what have I got out? The light smoky slate. I'm just going to do a little bit at the bottom. So it sort of looks like those boots are not floating uh, and just sitting on the ground there. And then I'm going to colour them in with my pool party markers. And let's see, let's just use the light one. Go over the whole thing with light. It's not too much of a, a colouring card where it all has to be exact. It's only Wellington boots. And I've made it so that they're a bit mottly colour. Um, I was going to do the top in the the darker one, but if I remember rightly, the dark pool party is much greener. Oh, no. Let's go over there. I was thinking it was much dark, much, much darker, but actually it's not. I'll just put a little bit more shadow on those. I'll go over them again. And that's it for our boots. That's all we need. Pop that on one side. And then the next thing I do need is going to be the umbrella. And I'm going to cut that out in one of the DSPs we've got. So I'm going to stamp it on the DSP and then I'll cut it out on that as well. Let's find another block. And the black. And I do like stamping on DSP and um, using that as my background. I think it's sometimes it just looks nicer than colouring in all the time and it makes it easy. Let's find that punch. A little bit stiff this punch. I haven't, I haven't used it and so it is a little bit stiff. I'm just going to line that up. Make sure I've got the same kind of border all the way around. Now, if you wanted, you could stamp the, um, the umbrella handle as well and cut that out. But I just want it on a little scrap of card. So I'll just get my scrap box out. And I'm just going to put it in so that I only really get the handle. You can see I use all my old envelopes from the um, the dies. 
that we have. Um, I keep all my colours together, like these are browns and blacks, sort of the neutrals and then I'll have all the reds together and things. And I just keep any little scraps that I've got that I think might be useful. Okay, so that's my umbrella. And then the next thing I want are just some little flowers. So let me get another little piece of scrap. And I've already put the flowers on. Where did I put them? There they are. And then I'm just going to colour them in. Um, the colours I'm using, I just went with this for my colour palette. So that I've got the same Daffodil Delight yellows, um, the same little um, petal pink, and here we go, and the old olive for the leaves. And there's really not much colouring on this. There's only a couple of leaves. And I'm not worrying about putting lots of shading and lots of different colours in. It's just whichever colour comes to hand. There we go. I'm not even using the light and the darks. Let's colour this little one in as well. And this way, we just know that everything's going to match. And it's... Uh, going to be the same as the DSP and there's not lots of different colours so it'll all match in together and I am just going to put a little bit of what is this pumpkin pie just for the middle so that it sort of picks up the terracotta tile from there I don't have terracotta tile in the blend so and then I'm going to quickly fussy cut that. I'm not worrying too much. Just going to cut up to the edge. And if you have some little bits of white showing, that doesn't matter. I'll show you what I do with those little bits of white after I've cut. And it always makes your fussing cutting just look a little bit easier and a little bit nicer. I'm not always very patient when I fussy cut. Sometimes I, uh, yeah, I want to get it done quickly. So I'm not the world's best foot fussy cutter. But honestly, I don't think it matters. I think people are just so happy that you've taken the time and made them a card that you know they're not going to inspect it. Okay, now let me get my little black stamping right marker and then I'm just going to go around the edges you've probably seen me do this before and that way it just covers up the little white bits so if you've left little tiny white bits on there when you've cut you can't see them and when this is on the card you're not looking sort of down and seeing that that it's printed on white And equally, if you've cut a little bit off that you shouldn't have been cutting off, then you can go over with your Stamping Right marker as well and, and make it look sort of like that's how it was meant to be. Like here, I've cut a tiny bit too much of that flower off, so I'm just going to go around. And make it look like it's still got the whole of the flower there. Okay, so let's start to put our card together. Now... Here's the front that we did, and where did my little, where did my little boots go? Here they are. I know I still need to get a background colour there. I'm just not quite sure yet what I'm going to use. Um, I think I might see if I've got some of this old olive. And let me have a little look in my greens. Pack. Yeah, it doesn't. It won't matter. If it's not one of those exact colours, if it's you know, slightly different. But while I've got these kind of colours and I can use them, I might as well. Okay, let me see. I've got the larger punch. I don't know if it's big enough. Ooh, not quite. It's not quite big enough. Ooh, maybe. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> 
it will work. Okay, so I'm going to have this mounted like this. Let's put these two pieces together. Stick that one on. Make sure that will go like that. I think I might put a ribbon across. Uh, let's have a look. Where's my white? Right. Let's have this one. Now, I'm going to put it so that I've got a knot at this side. And you can put it all the way around and tie a knot so that the ribbon goes all the way on the back. Or you can tie it so that you don't have that much. You don't have to use as much. If I just tie a knot like this. You can put just a little piece over here. But I actually want to see the ribbon going all the way across. So let's undo this. Might be better if I put my glasses on, I could see it. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to put just a little bit of tear and tape on the back, and that will hold my ribbon on there. here and a piece at the other side and that way I know my ribbon will stay quite secure on there it won't be popping off or sliding about while I'm trying to tie the knot or anything let's try and get it a bit straight okay and then I'm going to chop off a little piece here. And just tie a little knot. You could put a little um, glue dot down here if you wanted. And you could tie it into a bow. I just want a very simple knot. And I know this ribbon, when you use it, this polka dot tool, it stretches a little bit. So... It, it doesn't behave like the rest of our ribbon. It, it doesn't always lay nice and flat. So, so just be careful. Okay, now. I'm not cutting the tails yet till I've got the rest of this on and I know how it wants to be. Okay, I'm going to pop this on with dimensionals. And I'm only going to put dimensionals at the top and at the bottom so that I've got that space where the ribbon's going through. Away. Move it over a tiny bit so that I still see a little piece of white at that side. There we go. And then let's glue. Oh, I wonder if I could put these on little dimensionals as well. You could actually, when you stamp these boots, you could actually mask them so that you've got the flowers over the top as well but uh, I think I'm just gonna put mine like that and then I might put the umbrella yeah I'm gonna put the umbrella on another little row of dimensionals if this was going through the mail then I probably wouldn't put it on another set of dimensionals just because I know if I have two layers of embellishments then it costs me more in the mail so. I won't use the little ones, let's use these big ones. And I'm going to attach this little handle because I don't want to have to try and put dimensionals on there. So let's see, which way do I want that handle to go? Just put a little, maybe pop it on with a glue dot. And let's find my glue dots. Now next week, I'm going to try and set up my Facebook Lives. I don't quite know what time I'm going to do them yet. It will probably be sort of late afternoon, early evening for me. Um, but you will be able to watch them again because, as I understand it, Facebook Lives, you can 
um, once it's recorded you leave it and people can access it later on so you don't have to watch live now I don't like the way that is let's, let's just see let's try that handle the other way I don't want it so long Oop, I stuck it on my finger now Okay, now let's cut those little tails. I like this polka dot ribbon because you can use the, the dots on it to um, use as your sort of guide to having the tails on the same angle. And I always just count the dots and think, right, that's three down, so I want this one to be three down. Uh, I like how it measures for you. Okay, now let's find that base. And where did I put the rest of my white card? Here they are. You could print, um, sort of stamp something else in here as well. But just for now, I'm not going to, just because of the time. And it's meant to be a quick Sunday video. And I'm, I'm already aware that I've used a lot of time up. So, you could always decorate your envelope as well. You know how I like to decorate my envelopes and use the matching piece of DSP or something. So there we are. I'm not too sure about that handle yet. I might find that I move that. I don't really want it to be over the flowers too much. I might just move the angle of the umbrella. But there we are. That's my fast, I hope it was fast, my little under my umbrella simple Sunday using one of my pre-arranged templates ones that I use a lot because it's just such a useful one so thanks very much for watching me everybody I hope to see you on the Facebook lives during the week and I'll see you all again on Wednesday for our ordinary video take care and stay safe bye bye